the Mirza Hashem, we're going to learn Brochus Daf Nun Beis. We're going to start nine lines from the bottom of Daf Nun Aleph Omid Beis immediately after the Mishnah. Says the Gemara, Tonu Rabbonon, Dvorim Shebein Beis Shamai Ubeis Hillel Basuda. The introductory words of the Mishnah, the first Mishnah of this parak, is that we're going to discuss the matters of dispute between Beis Shamai and Beis Hillel regarding Suda, regarding the meals. The first one was the order of the brachas we make on Kiddush on Friday night, or Yom Tov. Do we first say the Hagofen on the wine and then the bracha of Mekadish HaShabos, or do we first say Mekadish HaShabos and then the Hagofen? You first say the Mekadish HaShabos, and only afterwards you say the Hagofen. The Mishnah just tells us that that's Beth Shammai's opinion, but does not tell us the reason. The Brisa we're learning now is going to tell us why Beth Shammai say that they should first say the Mekadish HaShabbos and only after that say the Hagofen. And Beth Shammai is going to give two reasons. Number one, Shehayoyim goyrim leyayin shiyovoy. What's the cause of Kiddush? It's the Shabbos. Since Shabbos, the Kedusha Sayyim, is the cause for the wine, you first make a bracha on the day, which is the Shabbos, and then you say the Hagofen. A second reason, Ukvar Kiddush Hayyim va'adayin yayin lo'ibo. The day was sanctified, Shabbos came in before you make Kiddush. You only ever make Kiddush on Shabbos, irrespective of whether you make early Shabbos or you don't make early Shabbos. But either way, Shabbos is there before you make Kiddush. Therefore, you first relate to the Shabbos, which is the bracha of Mekadish HaShabbos, and only then you relate to the Kiddush, which is the bracha of the Hagofen. You first make a Hagofen, and then you say the Mekadish HaShabbos. What's his reason? Says the Gemara, says the Braisa, Shehayayin goyrem lukdusha shetei omer. Bishinal says, let's look at the Kiddush, the, what we're saying. When we're saying the Kiddush, we're only able to say anything because we have a cup of wine. We're making Kiddush on a cup of wine, therefore we can say Mekadish HaShabbos. If there would be no cup of wine, you would not be making Kiddush. Therefore you first make the bracha on the Hagofen, on the wine, and then you make the bracha of Mekadish HaShabbos. Dovar Akhir. But it'll say another reason why you should make the Agofen before the Mekadish HaShabbos, because Birch HaSayayin Tadira, the bracha of Hagofen is very frequent. Or Birch HaSayayim and the bracha of Mekadish HaShabbos is relatively Einoi Tadira. It's not so frequent. And we have a rule, Tadir, Vashe Einoi Tadir, Tadir Kaidim. When you have one when you have two mitzvahs or two brachas and you need to know which one to do first, then the one that you do more frequently takes precedence over the one you do less frequently. The halacha is like bishilel that you first say agofen and then mekadish shabbos. Asks the Gemara, my dover achir, why did bishilel have to say a dover achir? Another reason that you say agofen first because of todir v'sheinu todir. Says the Gemara as follows: hosam Are you going to say that the the fact that Beis Shammai said two reasons why you say Kiddush first, and Beis Hillel only said one reason that you say Agafen first, and therefore the halacha should be like Beis Shammai? Hochanami Tartininu. That's why Beis Hillel say a Dover Achir that we also have a second reason that you say Agafen first. That Birchas Hayayin Tadira or Birchas Hayayim Einu Tadira Tadir V'Sheinu Tadir Tadir Kaidim. V'Halacha Kedivir Beis Hillel and the Halacha is like Beis Hillel. Now the Gemara is asking: Pshita, is it not obvious that the Halacha is like Beis Hillel? We know it's a Gemara in Bob Metziah Daf Nuntes and in other places that a heavenly voice emanated from the heaven, a baskel, and said that this, the halach is always like Bishilil, almost always like Bishilil. So what's the Chiddush that we pass in like Bishilil? Says the Gemara, Ibo is a Mekoidim baskel. It could be the Chiddush that Halacha Kabishilil was talking about before the baskel came out. And therefore we had to say that Allah is like Bishilil. The boy say it could be Laakhar Baskil. Even after the Baskil, we still have to say that Allah is like Bishilil and it's not necessarily taken for granted. Rabbi Yeshua, he, according to Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua there in Bob Metzia and Daphnuntes, 
The Omar in Majgichin Bebaskel. Rabbi Shua holds we pay no heed to heavenly voices. Hashem gave the Torah down here to us people, and the way that the Dayonim, the Rabbonim, the Chachomim see fit to rule, that's how you rule. And no heavenly involvement can change the ruling. That's the opinion of Rabbi Shua. And since we do not pay heed to the Baskel, it's a Chiddush, or it's not to be taken for granted, that Halacha is like Beis Hillel. Continues the Gemara. We just saw in the Mishnah that according to Bishamai we first say Kiddush, Mekadish HaShabos, and then we say Hagofen. Can it really be? Is that Bishamai's opinion? Vatanya, we're going to bring a Brysa, and it would seem in that Brysa that Bishamai hold the opposite. What does it say in the Brysa? Hanechnas lebeisoi b'moitza Shabbos. Somebody comes home on Motza Shabbos and he has to make Havdola. Mevorich al Hayayin, he first makes the bracha of Boir Priagofen, that's Yayin. Val Hamoir, and then on the Nair, the bracha on the flame. Val Abasomim, and then on the, on the Basomim, the fragranted species. Vachar Kach Omer Avdola, and only afterwards he makes Havdola. And even before we continue the Raisa, this is the end of the question. Havdala is a form of Kiddush. Kiddush means a separation where Shabbos is unique over the week. In the same way as you make a form of Kiddush when Shabbos comes in, you also make a type of Kiddush when Shabbos leaves, separating Shabbos from the rest of the week. We call it Havdala. So why with Kiddush does Bishamai maintain you first say Kiddush Hayoim and then Hagofen, but Havdala Bishamai say you first make Yayin and then Havdala? That's the question of the Gemara, but we're going to go on a bit of a journey just to determine that this price is actually Beis Shammai. If it's not Beis Shammai, then you can't ask a contradiction to Beis Shammai in our Mishnah. But at the end of the, the long journey we're about to embark, it's going to become apparent that this price is Beis Shammai, and this is the question. And the end, the Gemara is going to explain to us the distinction between Kiddush and Havdola. Let's continue the Brysa for the time being. What happens if this fellow's only got one cup of wine and he still wants to have a Suda after Shabbos? He wants to have Malava Malka or call it whatever you want. He wants to have his Mozo in his Suda. And Toysus discusses how can you even entertain the idea of having a Suda before, before making Havdala. Toysus discusses that. But the Brysa says if he's only got one Kois and he's not going to ha- be able to say Birchas HaMozin later on a kois, if he drinks it now for Avdala, what should he do? Mani HaMozin, he should leave this cup of wine till after he's eaten, he should first eat and then make Avdala. Um Shlin Kulon Nacharov, he will then, after he's eaten, he will use this cup of wine for Birchas HaMozin, and after Birchas HaMozin, he will be Mashal Shil, he will say all the other brachas that we saw in the Brysa, First Agofen, and then on the Nair, and then on the Basomim, and then on the Havdola. So that's the question. Asks the Gemara, Vaho mimai Who told you this price is Bishamai? Dilma Bishilalhi. Maybe this price is Bishilal. And Bishilal in our Mishnah say that you first say Agofen, and then you say Kiddush, and then Bavdola. You first say Agofen, and then you say Havdola. Then it won't be a contradiction. Your whole question is only with the assumption that the price is Bishamai. Says the Gemara, Loy Solko it cannot be Beis Shammai. Diktoni, because we saw in this Brysa, Moir Vacharkach Besomim. First you make the Bracha on the Nair, on the flame, and only afterwards on Besomim. Uman Shamas Lady Islehai Svara, who holds that you first make a Bracha on Nair and then Besomim? Beis Shammai, only Beis Shammai, it would seem. Titania, because we learnt in another Brysa, Omer Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda is now going to tell us about a machloikas Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel that he perceives. Lo inech luku Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, both Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel agree al ha-mozoin shebitchila, that you first say birchas ha-mozoin, assuming that he's eaten and now he's got birchas ha-mozoin and havdola to make on the same kois, you first say mozoin. Val havdola shi besoif, and they both agree that the last broch you make is the one of havdola. What's the machlokes b'shamay and b'shilal? Al ha-moyer v'al ha-besomim. B'shamay o'imri mo'yer v'achar kach besomim. According to Rabbi Yehuda, b'shamay holds you first make a bracha on the neir and then on the besomim. Or b'shilal o'imri besomim v'achar kach mo'yer. You first make a bracha on the besomim and then on the neir. 
And therefore you see here that who holds that you first say a brach on the neir and then the basamim? It's Beishamai. If so, coming back to our original b'risa, if it says there that you say mazoin and then yayin and then neir and then basamim and then havdala, if neir is before basamim, it must be Beishamai. And then once we know it's Beishamai, we can ask a contradiction between that b'risa and our Mishnah. Says the Gemara, You're right. According to the way Rabbi Yehuda explained the Machloikas Beshamai and Beshilel, then that Brisa must be Beshamai because only Beshamai say that Neir is before Besomim. Dilma Beshilel Hiva Alibadir Abmeir. We have another opinion, not Rabbi Yehuda. We have Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir has a different tradition as to what the Machloikas Beshamai and Beshilel was. And according to Rabbi Meir, it could both Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel say that Neir is before Besamim. If so, that original Brisa, maybe it's Beis Hillel, not to contribute, but Reb Meir, and then there's no contradiction. No, it cannot be, even the Beis Hillel of Reb Meir, it cannot be. Why? We saw in our Mishnah, which is the Reb Meir that we just mentioned, is our Mishnah. Beis Shammai say, first Neir, Umozoin and after Neir you say Mozoin, Birchas Hamozoin, U Besomim, and then Besomim and then Havdola. According to Rab Meir, that's the opinion of Beis Shammai. Beis Hillel Oimrim, Beis Hillel say Neir, they agree that Neir is first. U Besomim and then Besomim, like Beis Shammai, that Neir is before Besomim. But whereas Beis Shammai put Mozoin between Neir and Besomim, Beis Hillel hold that after Neir is Besomim, Mozoin and Mozoin, Birchas Mozoin is after Besomim, and Havdola and Havdola at the end. So that's according to Reb Meir, the Machleikus Beshil and Beshama is not whether Neir is before Besomim. Both agree Neir is before Besomim. The Machleikus is, is Mozoin after Neir or is Mozoin after Besomim? As either way, that Brysa, the Hosom, the Brysa we're discussing, the first Brysa we mentioned, Ktoni im Einloi. And that original Brisa says that the very first broch you make is Mozoin. And that's not Bis Hillel and not Bis Shammai, according to Reb Meir. And then we'll say, if it's not Bis Hillel or Bis Shammai, according to Reb Meir, we're back to Reb Yehuda's explanation. And according to Reb Yehuda, they both agree that Mozoin is first. But according to Reb Yehuda, the Machlokas Bis Shammai and Bis Hillel is whether Neir is first or Basamim is first. And according to Beis Shammai, Neir is first. So when we have a Brisa that we're discussing that says first Mozoin, and then Yayin, and then Neir, and then Basamim, it can only be Beis Shammai according to Rabbi Yehuda. Shema minod Beis Shammai hiva libud Rabbi Yehuda. Or mikol mokim kashi. And now we have our question. If it's Beis Shammai, then how can Beis Shammai say by Havdola? Do you first make Hagofen, Yayin, and then what we call Kiddush? In Havdola, but in the Mishnah we saw that Kiddush is first, according to Beshamai, and only afterwards is Yain. That's the question of the Gemara. Answers the Gemara, Kosovri, Beshamai, Shani, Yule, Yoima, Mefuke, Yoima. Beshamai assumed that there's a difference between when you bring Shabbos in and when Shabbos goes out. Yule, Yoima, when you're bringing Shabbos in, Kamot, Magdominon, Le Odif. We want Shabbos to come in as quickly as possible. So the very first opportunity, we say the brach of Mekadesh HaShabbos, even before the brach of Hagofen. Afuke Yoyma, by the end of the day, when we are sending Shabbos away, Kamodem Achrinon Le'odif, we prefer Shabbos to leave as late as possible. Ke'echad lo'i lehave alon kemasui, in order that it shouldn't look as if Shabbos is a burden for us. And therefore we say the brach of Avdola at the very last opportunity, and we say the brach of Hagofen, before it, and therefore it's not a contradiction, our Mishnah, which is talking about Kiddush on Friday night, where Bishamai say you first say Kiddush and then Yayin, whereas Havdola you first say Yayin and then Havdola. Continues the Gemara. Vesavri Bishamai Birchas Amozoin, or any brocha for that matter, to Una Kois. We just saw now in the Brisa that the Brisa says that if you only have one Kois and you're going to want to make Birchas Amozoin on it, then you wait till you've eaten, and then you say Birchas HaMozin and then Havdala. But that seems that Brocha, Birchas HaMozin, needs a kais. Is that really Beishamai's opinion? Votnan, we learnt in the Mishnah, in our Mishnah, later on in the Mishnah, Bolohem Yayin Le'achar HaMozin. If at the end of the meal, before Birchas HaMozin, a cup of wine comes to the table, 
Im ein shom elo oisei kos, if you only have that kos, and you can either say hagofen and drink it now before birchas hamozin, or keep it to say birchas hamozin with it, beis shama imri mevarich alayayin v'achar kach mevarich alamozin. You can first say that gofen, presumably, my love to mevarich alay v'shosi lay, you make the bracha on that gofen and drink the cup of wine, and then you say Birchas Amozin without a cup of wine. So you see that Beth Shammai does not need a cup of wine to Birchas Amozin. And this seems to contradict the Brysa we saw before that if you're not going to have a kois for Birchas Amozin later, you delay half dollar till after Birchas Amozin because Birchas Amozin needs a kois. The Gemara is going to suggest two answers. The first answer is Loi de Mevarechalei Who said he's going to drink the cup? Bishamai, the end of our Mishnah, says that if a cup of wine comes before the end of the meal, before Bircha Samozin, after you've finished eating, then you say Hagofen on the cup and you don't drink it. You leave it. Ask the Gemara of Omar Mar, Amavorich Tzorich Sheyitim. We know there's a klal, a rule, that if you make a bracha, you have to at least taste some of the, the wine or any food you're making a bracha on. Says the Gemara de Toimli. He does taste it. Omar Mar, Ta'amoy, Pogmoy. But did we not say that if you taste, if you drink a little bit from a cup of wine, you, the cup is now called blemished. You cannot use it now for a koishil bracha later. Says the Gemara, the time lay biyade. He didn't drink straight from the cup. He spilt a little bit of wine onto his hand and he drank from his hands. So he's made the bracha. He's tasted a little bit of the wine and he keeps the cup for birchas hamozin. If Omar Mar asks the Gemara, did we not say koishil bracha tzorich shiur? We know that there's a minimum required sure a measurement of wine in the cup. If you've tasted a little bit of that wine, there's not going to be enough wine in the cup for your Birch HaSamozin. Says the Gemara, He had, the cup was big enough that there was more than the minimum required amount of wine in the cup, and he spilt a little bit on his hand. He still had enough wine for the Birch HaSamozin later. Asks the Gemara, sham elo ktoni. The Mishnah is talking about a case that you only have one cup of wine, which we would have thought it means that he's only got one cup, just about the minimum of measurement. So if you taste some of that, you won't be left with enough. How can you say it was a big cup, there was enough wine for Birchas Mozin plus a little bit to taste with the Agofen? Says the Gemara, Tre have All the Mishnah means is he didn't have enough wine for two cups, one for Agofen before Birchas HaMozin, and one for a full kois for Birchas HaMozin. Umichad Nofish, however, he had more wine than a minimum cup, one cup. He had one in a bit, and he drank a little bit of wine. He still had enough left to make Birchas HaMozin on the Revius of Yain, which is the minimum required shia. Asks the Gemara of Atoni Rebchia, we saw in a brisa regarding our Mishnah, that Rebchia learnt, Beishamai Oymri Mavorich Alayayin Versho Seyu. That it says explicitly in the Mishnah that at the end of the meal, before Birchas Hamazon, you make the Agofen and you drink the whole cup. Vachar Kach Mavorich Birchas Hamazon, which would seem that the Birchas Hamazon has no cup. According to that, you can't say, like we just answered, that that Mavorich Ilaveu Monachle, that he makes the Bracha but he doesn't drink the Revius of the cup. No, it seems to be explicit, according to Rebchia, that according to Beis Shammai, he drinks the whole kois before Birchas HaMozin. If so, Birchas HaMozin does not need a kois. If so, it seems to contradict the bride that we started with today, that you need to have a cup of wine for the Birchas HaMozin, and therefore you keep the Havdola till after the meal. Elo says the Gemara, we have no choice. Tre tanoi alibi de Beis Shammai. It seems to be a machlokas tanoim regarding Beis Shammai. You've got the bride of Rebchia, explaining our Mishnah that according to Beis Shammai you do not need a cup of wine for Birch HaSamozin and you have the Brais that we started with at the top of the Omud that says that according to Beis Shammai you do need a cup of wine for Birch HaSamozin. Continues the Gemara. Beis Shammai Oimrim V'chulu The next dispute mentioned in our Mishnah between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel regarding the Suda is whether you first do Natila Yudayim which you need to do before eating bread and then you pour the cup of wine and drink it as was common practice in those days that they would drink a cup of wine before making the Hamoitzi? Or do you first do pour the cup of wine and drink it and only then do the Natilas Yudaim? 
Tonu Rabbonon. So the Mishnah just tells us that according to Beis Shammai, you first do Natila Sudaim, and according to Beis Hillel, you first pour the cup and drink it, and doesn't tell us why. We're going to learn in a Braisa what the reasoning behind the argument is. Says the Gemara, Tonu Rabbonon, Beis Shammai, Oimrim, Noitlin, Yodaim, Ve'achar Kach, Moizgim, Esakois. You first do Natila Sudaim, and then you pour the Kois and drink it. Why? She'im at oimer moiz gines hakois tchila. If you're first going to pour the cup, gzeira shem yitmu mashkin shachoyre hakois machmas yodov v'yachzur v'yitamu es hakois, etc. Before we're going to learn the Gemara inside, let's let's introduce some of the rules that this sugi is going to be based on. We know that in the Torah there's a concept called tuma, and there are different levels of severity of tuma. Each one with their own halachas. There's a concept called Avi Avois Hatuma, the father of all fathers, the grandfather of all tumas, which is a dead body. And then you've got an Av Hatuma, which is something one level Tomei less than Avi Avois Hatuma. And then there's a concept of a Rishoin, the first generation after the Av, Sheini Shlishi Ravi. If a Avi Avois Hatuma touches something, it will typically become an Av. If an Av touches something, it would typically become a Rishon. If a Rishon touches something, it would become a Sheni. Sheni would make a Shlishi, and Shlishi would make a Ravi. That's the very basic rule. However, there are many, many details. Not everything can become a Ravi. For example, only Kochim can become Ravi. Only Truma and Kochim can become Shlishi. All Chulin can only become a maximum of a Sheni. And even then, not always. Besides for those basic rules, which are minatira, there are a number of durabonons that crept into the alochas of Tuma and Taira. For example, there's a locha that hands, a person's yodaim are called shniois, which means that the chachomim made a gzeira, that any hands, normally minatira, there's no such thing as part of a person being tomei. Either the person is tomei or he's not tomei. The Chachomim said that because if you're going to eat, and if you eat, you may be eating with a coin, or if you are a coin, and you might be eating truma, and truma can become shlishi, and eating truma that became tome is very stringent. Therefore, before eating, the Chachomim said, we assume your hands to be shniois, to be a sheni, and therefore you need to wash your hands natilas yodaim. Natilas yodaim removes the the tumor called shniois from a person's hands. There's another halacha that even though normally av and avi avois makes av, av makes rishoin, rishoin, sheni, etc., there's one exception. There, there are others, but let's talk about the, the exception mentioned in the Gemara here that it is called mashkin. The Chachomim said, for whatever reasons it is, we don't need to discuss them now, that liquids. Even if a liquid was touched by a sheni, and then it should be stay either tohir if it's chulin, because chulin cannot become shlishi, and if it's truma, it will become shlishi. The chachomim said no. The chachomim said any liquids that are touched by a sheni, they become rishon midrabonon. They have the status of a rishon, and they in turn can make something else a sheni. So your daim are called shniyos, and liquids are a rishon, which means that if you have a hands that touch the liquid, then even though the hands are shniyos, the liquids now become a rishon. If your hands afterwards touch those liquids, then even after Natilas Yudaim, your hands are tohir, but since your hands can become a sheni, if you touch those liquids, your hands will become a sheni. And then it's as if you didn't wash Natilas Yudaim. Those are the rules. There's one more halacha, that since the tumor of mashkin, of liquids, becoming a rishon, is only with Rabbonon, the Rabbonon wanted to distinguish between those kalim, those vessels that became tomei from original tomois minatayra, from an original rishon, or from a type of rishon which is a liquid that's only got the status of a rishon with Rabbonon. So they said as follows, if liquids that became a rishon midra bonon touched the outside of a vessel only the outside of the vessel is tommy the inside of the vessel stays completely tohir 
And that's in order that we could distinguish between a Tomei, which is Rabbonon, and that which is Minatayra. It must be made clear that if these mashkin, which are rishon in Midrabonon, touch the inside of the cup, then the whole cup is Tomei, also the outside, because in order to distinguish between the Toma Min Hatayra and the Tomei Midrabonon, it was enough to only distinguish in one area, and that is if the mashkin, which are rishon in Midrabonon, touch the outside of the vessel, that only the outside becomes Tomei. We don't need to make this distinction also regarding whether these mashkin touch the inside of the vessel. Those are the rules, and with those rules we're now going to understand this Gemara. There are many more alochas in Tum of Atayra, many details which we didn't mention. As we travel through Shas, we'll become acquainted with the rest of them. Says the Gemara again. It's important that you first do Natilas Yudaim and only afterwards you pour the cup of wine to drink. If you're going to first pour the cup of wine, then we have a problem. Because since this cup, and we learned this previously, a cup has to be washed. So it's very possible that the outside of the cup has on it some liquids. For it's still wet from the water that you rinse the cup with. So what's going to happen now? If you're going to pour the cup of wine and inevitably you might end up touching the, the cup, your hands are shneos because you haven't done a tilas yudaim. So you're going to end, touch the kois. Your hands being shneos are going to touch the water which is on the outside of the kois. Then what's going to happen? The water outside on the outside of the kois is going to make the kois the outside of the kois, is going to make the kois a sheni. And according to Beis Shammai, one is not allowed to use a kois which is a sheni. And we'll see on Ahmed Beis why. But that was Allah according to Beis Shammai, you may not use a sheni kois, and therefore we have no choice, says Beis Shammai, you have to do Natilas Yudaim first before you touch the kois. Now your hands are completely tohir. So even if you're going to touch the liquids that are still on the outside of the kois, there's no tome around Let's see that inside. Gzeiro shemo yitmu mashkin shachiri akuis machmas yodov. If you're not going to do natilas yudaim first, then maybe there'll be some liquid on the outside of the kuis, and they will become tommy from his yet un his hands that have not yet been washed. Viyarzur viyutamu es akuis, and those liquids that now have the status of a risho in midrabonon are going to make the outside of this kuis tommy midrabonon. It's going to become a sheni. Asks the Gemara, "Velitamu yodaim lekois." Why are you only worried that your hands are going to b- make the liquids behind the kois tommy, and those liquids will then become rishon, and they will make the kois sheni midrabonon? Why don't you say it more simply? Your hands that have not yet been washed are going to make the kois tommy. Your hands are shniyos, and the kois will become tommy. Says the Gemara, Yodaim Shniyoshim. Since the Yodaim are only Tomei as a level of a Sheni, Ve'ein Sheni Oise Shlishi Bechulin. This cup is not Truma, it's not Hektish, it's a Chulin cup. What's inside it is Chulin. And even what's outside it, the cup itself is, we're talking here in the Alochus of Sheni. So if your hand, which is Sheni, touches the cup in the event the cup is dry, nothing will happen to the cup. So what's the chashash, says Bishamai, Elu Ali Mashkin. If there's water, if the outside of the cup is wet, and when regarding liquids, the chachomi made the gezeira that they become rishoin, the hands being shiny will make those liquids become rishoin, and they in turn will be metame, the outside of the kois. So that's why Bishamai say that you have to do Natila Sudaim first before you do the pouring of the wine. Or Bishilal. Moizgin es hakuis v'achar kach noitlim liyudaim. But he'll say no. You first pour the cup of wine and drink it, and only after you do natilas yudaim, because natilas yudaim is actually going to stand against us here. Why? She'im ato imer noitlim liyudaim tchilo. If you're going to first do natilas yudaim, which is what Bishamay wanted them to do, then gezeira shemo yitzmu u mashkin shabi yudaim machmas hakuis. Beis Hillel have an intrinsic argument with Beis Shammai. Beis Shammai say you're not allowed to ever use a kois in a meal, which is a sheni. And therefore the kois that they're using is completely tohir. Make sure you don't make it tommy. 
Therefore, B'Shamay say you do Nutil Asudayim first. B'Shilal don't have a problem, we're going to see later why, but B'Shilal don't have a problem with the Kois itself being a Shani. Because what you're going to put in the Kois is Chulin. We don't have a problem with that. But what, this, so this is where we do have the problem. Since it calls into Beis Hillel, the Kois, the outside of the Kois at least, may be a Shani. If you do Nutil Asudayim first, what's going to happen? Your hands might be a little bit wet still. The water on your hands is going to touch the outside of the kois. And the outside of the kois is a shiny, and then the liquid, the water on your hand, is going to become a rishon. And then the liquids on your hand become a rishon, are now going to make your hands again shniyos. So you haven't gained anything with your natilas yudayim. Your hands are going to remain shniyos. Let's see that inside. You're first going to wash your hands. Gzeira, we make a gzeira. Shemo yitmu mashkin shebiyodayim machmas hakois. The kois that may be a sheni latoma will make the water on your hands a rishoin. V'yitamwes yodayim, and they in turn will make your hands tommy. Asks the Gemara, v'nitmi kois liyodayim. According to you, Beis Hillel, that the kois could be a sheni, then why don't you just say that it's that the kois is going to make the hands tommy. Why do you need the water in between? Why do you need the Natil Asudayim to present this issue? It should be a problem with the kois touching the hands. It says, no. Ein kli metame odom. This kli is a sheni. And a sheni, a kli, will not make an odom, even just his hands, become tommy. Venitmi lemashkin shebesoichai. Why are you not worried that the water outside the kois is not only is going to become Rishon and make your hands Tommy, but they are going to make the Kois Tommy, and everything in the Kois is going to become Tommy. Says the Gemara, Hocha Bekli Shenitmu Achayrov Bemashkin Oskinon. Over here we're talking about, and we're only talking about a case where this vessel, only the outside was Tommy, not the inside. And therefore whatever's inside stays Tohir. Because the Chachamim said that any Kli that became Tomei because of Mashkin, uh, only the outside is Tomei, not the inside. If so, here the whole issue is only that the outside of the Kois is Tomei, and if you do Natil Asudayim, the water on your hands is going to become Tomei from the outside of the Kois, and then your hands are going to in turn become Tomei again. What's in the Kois, we're not worried about. Why? Because since the kois only became Tomei from the outside, that's the type of kois that Beis, that Beis Hillel are allowed to use. The inside is Tohir. The Gaboi Tomei, the back of it, only the back of it is Tomei. Titnan, as we saw in the Mishnah, Keli Shenitmu Achirov, a type of vessel, a utensil that only became Tomei from Mashkin Midrabonon, a choir of Tmeim, indeed the back of it, the outside of the Kli is Tomei, Toichei by the inside, the Voignoi and the rim, at the top of the, the vessel there's a rim that's curled out, that's Toir, the Oznoi and a, an ear shaped handle that mugs typically have is also Toir, the Yodov and any other type of handle the long handles or any other handle, tohirim, they're all tohir. Nitzmo toichoi, in the vent that the inside of the vessel became tomei, even only midrabonon, from these mashkin, nitzmo kuloi, then the back of the kli is also tomei. Now the Gemara asks, b'may komifligi, what's the intrinsic point that Bishama and Basilil are arguing in? So it says as follows: Bishamai savri also leishtamish beklish anit muachir of b'mashkin. Bishamai say you're never allowed to use for a su- in a suda any cup that the outside is tommy, if it became tommy from mashkin. Why? Gezeira mishum nitzaitzis. It's a precautionary measure because of droplets. What might happen if you have a kois which is the back of it is is a sheni? And then some drops might f- come out of what the inside the cup and fall onto the outside of the cup. Those droplets that fall from the cup to the outside of the cup are going to become, are now mashkin, which are tome, and they're going to become rishoin. And they in turn are going to be metame the yodaim. You're not allowed to have hands that are tome. That's how Rashi explains this. Rabbi Yenus says that uh, what might happen is that those droplets might fall back into the kois and make everything in the kois tommy. 
But either way, the Pashta says, according to Rashi, we're worried that his hands are then going to become Tommy. So that's why Bishamai said you're not allowed to use a cup that the outside of it is Tommy, has become a Rishrain due to Mashkim. Has been, well, the Mashkin Rishrain made them Tommy Shani, you're not allowed to use such a case. That's called Gezerah Mishum Nitzaytzeis. Veleka Lemigzer Shemo Yitzmu HaMashkin Shebi Yudayim Bekois. And since Bishamai say that you're never allowed to use a cup, that the back of it is a Shani, and therefore, what Bis Hillel were worried about, that you have a kois that the outside is a sheni, if you do natilas you're dying first, the water on your hands are going to become tommy from the outside of the kois. According to Bishamai, there's no concern, because you're not allowed to use such a kois bechlal in the Suda. Bis Hillel Sovra, Bis Hillel hold, mutalish tamish beklish, and it's muachir of bemashkin. Bis Hillel hold, you're allowed to use such a cup that the back is tommy. Therefore, only according to Bes Hillel, we have a problem. If you're using a cup that the back of it, the outside of it, is shiny, and if you do not till as you die in first, your hands will be wet, the water on your hands will become Tommy Midrabonon from the outside of that Kli. And then, in turn, it will make your hands Tommy again. Bisham, I don't have that problem, because the Kois has to be Tahir. Bes Hillel Sovra Mutalish Tamish Beklish and Itma of Bemashkin. Omri, they assume, why is it mutter to use such a kois? It's very not common that some drips should drop, some droplets should come from inside the cup to the back of the cup. And since we're not worried about those droplets, we therefore don't have a problem with using a kois that, that the back of it is tommy. However, if you're using such a kois, you have to make sure your hands are completely dry so that the water on your hands should not become tommy from the back of the kois. How do you do that? By making sure that you first do the maziga, you pour the cup and drink it, and only after you do, you do natilas yudayim, and that's the opinion of Bishilal. According to Bishilal, the whole concern, as we just explained, is that the hands will become the water on his hands will become Tommy from the back of the kais. Therefore, Bis Hillel hold that you do Natil Asudayim only when you're finished with the kais. Dover Akhir. There's another reason, according to Bis Hillel, that you first do Mazigas HaKois and only afterwards Natil Asudayim, because take off the Natil Asudayim, Suda. The, the Suda has to follow on immediately from the Natil Asudayim, and therefore the Mazigas HaKois, drinking the cup of wine, would be done before Natil Asudayim. Asks the Gemara, my Dover Akhir, why do Bes Hillel need this second reason why to do the Maziga Sakois and only then the Natilas Yudaim? Says the Gemara, Hochikom alu Bes Hillel Beshamai. Bes Hillel are actually a type of dialogue with Beshamai. Ludit chud da amritu. Also, Lishtamish Beklish Akhir of Tmeim. You Bes Shamai hold that you're not allowed to use a cup that the back of it is Tommy. Why? Because you're afraid that the droplets from inside the cup will go outside the cup, as we just explained. And therefore, according to you, Shamai, it seems that you should first do Natilas Yudayim, like you say, and then Mazigas HaKois, because you're not worried about the back of the Kois being Tommy. Afila Hocha says, Beis Hillel, even though, even if you argue with me, and you say that the kois has to be completely tohir, I still have another reason why to do the maziga sakois before the natilas yudaim. Ho adifa, it's better to do the natilas yudaim after the maziga sakois to take off the natilas yudaim suda, because there's another halacha that it's kedai. It's the right thing to do is that immediately after natilas yudaim you should start the meal, and therefore that's enough reason that the maziga sakois should be before the natilas yudaim. Continues the Gemara. We saw another dispute between Bishama and Bishelel in our Mishnah, and that is that after you've wiped your hand on the mapper, on the cloth, on the napkin, on the towel, before, after, by, when you do Natilas Yudaim, where do you then put this mapper? And Rashi learns that this mapper was used in order to wipe your hands when they get dirty in the middle of the meal. Do you put it on the table? Shulchan, or do you put it on the cushion on the chair that you're sitting on called the keses? According to Beis Shammai, you put it on the table. According to Beis Hillel, you put it on the chair. We're now going to try and understand why they're arguing what's going on here. Says the Gemara, Tonu Rabbonon, we learnt in a brisa. 
you wipe your hands after Natilas Yudayim on the cloth, and you put it on the table, not on the cushion, not on the chair. says if you're going to put this cloth onto the chair, we have a problem. Mashkin Machmas Hakeses. The chair, the cushion, may well be a Sheni Latuma. You're going to put a wet towel onto that chair. The liquid in the towel, don't forget we're learning, we've just finished learning a sugi of mashkim. These mashkin midrabonon will become a rishoin. The chair will make the liquids in the towel into a rishoin. And then you're going to wipe your hands on this towel. Your hands are going to become a sheni. And you're not allowed to eat a meal with hands that are not toir. You're going to make the hands tommy, you're not allowed to do that. Ask the Gemara of an Atamya Keses Lemapa. Why are you focusing on the liquids in the towel becoming a Rishoin? Why don't you just say that the Keses is going to make the towel tommy? Says the Gemara, ain't Kli Matame Kli. The chair, the keses, is called a kli. The towel is called a kli. One kli cannot make another kli tommy. We're assuming that the kli is a sheni, that the keses is a sheni, and a sheni will not make another kli into a sheni or shlishi, etc. The netamye keses legavra, if you're worried that the kli, that the chair, the cushion, is a sheni, then you're going to put your hands on it, your hands are going to become tommy straight from the chair. Says the Gemara, Ein kli metame odom. A kli will not be metame an odom. Now, even though if the kli is a rishoin, the odom can become tommy, but Sarashi so says that we take it for granted that in the event that the chair or the cushion is a rishoin, he'll make sure not to touch it with his hands, because hands can become sheni. So we're talking about a chair that's a sheni, and therefore, even if he touches it with his hands, a sheni will not make his hands a sheni, but the sheni can make the liquids in the mapo into a rishoin, and those liquids in turn will make the hands into shniyos. Or Bishilil Oimrim. Bishilil say that you don't put the towel on the table in order to avoid the cushion. You put the towel on the cushion. If you're going to put this towel on the table, it could be that the table itself is a sheni, and the she- the table is going to make the water inside the mapa into rishon. And then the food on the table is going to touch the mapa, and the foods are going to become the tommy are going to become sheni. And we don't want that to happen. We want a person to eat his foods b'tayra. Asks the Gemara, "V'litami shulchan la'ichlin shebetsaychay." If the table is sheni, then why don't we say that the food themselves will become directly tommy from the table? Says the Gemara, "Hacha b'shulchan sheni askinon." We assume that the table is not more tommy than a sheni. It's not a rishon. Ve'ain sheni oyster shlishi b'chulin. Since the food items here are all chulin. Then even a table is sheni, it will not make chulin shlishi because there is no shlishi by chulin. Ask the Gemara, Elo Ali de Mashkin. If the table is sheni, and you're going to put the mapa on the table, the liquids in the mapa are going to become like mashkin do. They're going to become rishoin midrabanon. Now they're rishoin. They can make the oichlim become tome. They can become a sheni. Therefore, Beisilil say, don't put the mapa on the table where the food is put it on the keses, on the pillow, on the cushion where there's no food there. But Michael Mifligi asks the Gemara, what's the underlying point of their argument? Says the Gemara, Bishamai Savri, also Lishdamish Bishulchon Sheini. Bishamai say you're never allowed to use a Shulchon, a table which is a Sheini, in which case the whole worry of Bishilal doesn't apply. What do Bishilal say? Why do you have to put the mapper on the on the cushion in order to avoid the table because if you put it on the table the table might be a sheni and it will make the mashkin tommy according to Bishama, you're not even allowed to use such a table to eat on 
also l'ishtamish be cliche ni why gzeirim mishum oich le truma. Maybe there'll be a kohen sitting there eating truma, and truma can become a shlishi. The table will make the truma tomei. Therefore, you're not allowed to use such a table. Basil al Sabra, Basil, they argue, they say, You're allowed to use a table that's a Shani. Why? Kernim are very careful with the alochas, they're very meticulous to make sure that nothing should happen, nothing should go wrong. If a Koyan is going to eat his trum on this table, he'll make sure that the food does not touch or does not come into contact with the table. Continues the Gemara Dover Akhir. Another reason, according to Beis Hillel, that you should avoid the table and put the mapa on the keses, Ein tilas yudayim l'chulin minatayra. And let's explain what this means. The Gemara is going to try and explain it, but let's just get it clear first. According to Beis Shammai, you put the mapa on the table. We want to avoid the cushion. Why? The cushion could make the map the mashkin in the map erishin and then the yodayim the hands are going to become tommy there's no food on the on the cushion according to bis hillel you put the map on the cushion in order to avoid the shulchan because if the shulchan becomes tommy or is tommy then the mashkin in the map will become rishin and then the food that touches these rishin will become tommy so bishamay are clearly stressing that the the issue what they were worried about was the yodayim and they were not worried about the Eichlin. We know why they were not worried about the Eichlin, because they say that the Shulchan itself has to be always Tohir, mustn't be a Sheini. Bis Hillel, however, they are focusing on the Eichlin becoming Tommy, which is why you put the mapa on the cushion and not on the table, because the table might make the Mashkin Sheba Mapa Rishon, and they will make the food Sheini, and they're not focusing on the Yodaim. Number one, they don't mind if you put the mapa on the Keses, and then if the map is on the Keses and the Keses is allowed to be a Sheini, the Mashkin could become Rishoin, and then his hands, which is what Bishamai's Chashash was, his hands will become Tommy. Bishilil didn't seem to be worried about that. And even more, even on the table, Bishilil clearly say that we're worried that the if you put the map on the table, the table being a Sheini is going to make the Mashkin in the map. Rishon, and then what will happen? The food might become Tommy. It doesn't say that his hands that are also going to touch the mapper become Tommy. So Bis Hillel are clearly staying away from worrying about the hands and are focusing on on the food becoming Tommy. So that's what that's what they're explaining here. That's what this Dover Akhir is doing. So the term of the Dovarach in the Brisa was Ein tilas yodayim l'chulin min When you're eating chulin, the reason, the need to natilas yodayim first is not min it's only midrabonon. The truth is, any natilas yodayim is only midrabonon because the whole concept of tumas yodayim is only midrabonon. Even for truma, the, the chiyuv of natilas yodayim is only midrabonon. But since over here we're talking about chulin, the Gemara coined the term, the Brisa said, what they actually meant is period. There is no Natilas Yudaim Min Because there's no concept of Tumas Yudaim Min Asks the Gemara, my Dover Akhir, what's Bishilil trying to do with the Dover Akhir? Why do we need the Dover Akhir? Bishilil explained themselves that the reason you put the mape on the keses and not on the table is so the food shouldn't become tommy. This is what the message Beis Hillel was trying to give Beis Shammai. If you Beis Shammai are going to ask us Beis Hillel, Why are we worrying about the food becoming Tommy? And why are we not focusing on the hands becoming Tommy? I'll explain to you why. There's no concept of Natilas Yudayim Minatayra, the concept of Tumas Yodayim is only a rabbinical one. Mutav Shiyatamu Yodayim Shil Delespu Ikur Midoraisa, we relative to Tumas Oichlin, we don't worry so much about the hands. The worst that will happen to the hands is that they'll become Tommy Midurabonon. Val Yatamu Oichlin de Ispu Luhu Ikur Midoraisa. But food, where the concept of food becoming Tommy 
It's true that if the foods become Tomei from Mashkin, which are Risha in Midrabonon, the foods will only be Tomei Midrabonon. But the concept of foods becoming Tomei, Sheini or Shlishi, are biblical ones, Aminatera, and therefore we are more concerned about the food which is Yeshle Ikur Midoiraisa than the hands which the concept of Tomei Sidaim has no basis in the Torah. Continues the Gemara. Beishamai Oimrim Mechabdin Vechulu. The next conflict dispute between Beishamai and Beishilel regarding the Suda is do you first do my Machreinim and then clear away the table or the floor from the crumbs, or do you first clear away the floor or the table and only then wash my Machreinim? Ton Rabbonon, let's see in the Braisa where we're going to understand Beishamai and Beishilel. Bishamai Oimrim Mechabdin Esabayis, you first sweep away either the floor or the table, Vacharkach Noitlim Liudaim, and only afterwards you do Mai Machreinim, Sheima To Oimr Noitlim Liudaim Tchila, if you're going to do Mai Machreinim whilst the crumbs are still on the table, Nimza to Mastides Oichlim, the water of the Mai Machreinim could destroy the food, the crumbs, and you're not allowed to destroy food. Aval Natilas Yudaim le Bishamai Tchila, the requirement of first doing Mai Machreinim before taking away the the crumbs, Lo Yisvirulu, Bishamai don't hold of that, Mai Tama Mishum Pirurim, because it's more important to first clear away the crumbs and then do Mai Machreinim so that the water should not destroy the crumbs. And this whole sentence from Aval till Pirurim, uh, some take it out, it's just, it's a double, it's, it's, it's already said in the sentence before that. If the waiter happens to be a learned person, a Talmud Chochem, who noitl pirurim sheesh bem kazayis, he'll know that before my machreinim, you have to clear away all those crumbs and leftover bread pieces that are the size of a kazayis, an olive. Umaniach pirurim sheen bem kazayis, the little crumbs they leave on the table. Masayeh alel Rabbi Yechanon, this will be proof to Rabbi Yechanon, the Omer Rabbi Yechanon, Pirurin she'en bem kazayis, crumbs that are smaller than the size of a kazayis, mutter le'abdom, you're allowed to destroy them bayad, even knowingly you're allowed to destroy them with your hands. So according to Bez Hillel, that the Shamash is a Talmud Chochem, we're not worried that there's going to be big leftover bread, only the small crumbs, so you can do my machreinim first. According to Bez Shamay, where there might be bigger crumbs that are going to get ruined with the Maim Achreinim left on the table, therefore you do Maim Achreinim first. What's the point of their argument? Beshidol say you have to use a Shamash who's not an Amhoritz. You're allowed to use a Shamash who's an Amhoritz. And it's very complicated because before you use such a Shamash, he actually has to go to Mikveh to make sure he's tired. It's complicated. But Beis Shammai say that you're allowed to use a Shamash Amharetz. Since he could be an, a not learned person, he's going to leave the bigger crumbs on the table. And therefore you have to do my Machreinim. You have to first sweep away the crumbs and then do my Machreinim. However, according to Beis Hillel, where there's going to be a Shamash Talmud Chachem, there's in any case not going to be any big pieces of leftover bread on the table. There's no reason to sweep away the table first. You're allowed to do my Machreinim first. And some Achreinim actually say that, according to Bez Hillel, they say that you can do Maim Achreinim first, but the truth is, there's no preference either way. You can either do Mechabdin and Esabais, or you can do Maim Achreinim. Whichever one you want, you can do first. The main point is, according to Bez Shammai, you have to first sweep away the table before doing Maim Achreinim. Continues the Gemara. Omar Reb Yaisi Barachanina Omar Reb Huna. Bekulei Pirkin, in all the disputes mentioned in this Mishnah, in this Perek, Halacha Kebishilil. The Halacha is like Bishilil. Bar Meho, besides with this one here, that the Halacha is you first have to clear away the table, and only then you do my Machreinim, the Halacha Kebishamai. In this case, the Halacha is like Bishamai. Reb Oishia Masni Ibcha. Reb Oishia actually changes the text in our Mishnah to say that Bishilil holds that you first do and Beshama is the one that says you first do my machreinim, and if so, and therefore the halacha that says you do machabdinas habayis is actually bishilil, not Beshama. Continues the Gemara. Beshama oimrim neir umozoin v'chulu. The next dispute, which we mentioned in the Mishnah between Beshama and Beshilil by the Suda, is the 
the order of the Havdalah. Says the Gemara, Rav Huna bar Yehuda ikla lebei Rava. Rav Huna bar Yehuda was visiting Rava. Chazia le Rava de Borich abesomim bereisha. He saw that Rava was making the bracha on the besomim before making a bracha on the neir. Omar le Rav Huna bar Yehuda said to Rava, Mechti b'shamay ubis hilel amoir loy pligi. Is it not clear in our Mishnah that both according to Beis Shammai and according to Beis Hillel, you first make a bracha on the Nair and only afterwards on the Basamim? Why did you make a bracha on the Basamim first? To Tanya, it's actually supposed to be Ditnan, we saw in our Mishnah. Beis Shammai Oimrim, Beis Shammai say Nair, Mozoin, Basamim, Vavdola. That's the order. You first do Nair and then you say Birchas Mozoin and then Basamim. O Beis Hillel Oimrim, Neir ubesomim mozin vavdola. They also agree that you do neir before besomim. Just they say that mozin is after besomim. So why did you rava make the bracha on the besomim first? Oni rava basrei rava answered him. Zudivir reb mea. Our mission is reb mea. We've actually seen this on dafnun beis amidalaf already. Av reb yehuda oim reb yehuda says that the machlokes bishamayim besilil is different. Rabbi Yudah holds that everybody, both Beishamai and Beishelel, agree that you say Birchas Amozin first. If they both agree that you say the Broch of Havdola at the end. What's the argument between Beishamai and Beishelel? On the order of the Neir and the Besomim. Beishamai say you first make the Broch on the Neir and then on the Besomim. Or Beishelel Oimrim. Besomim v'acharkach moir. You first make a bracha on the besomim, and then on the neir. V'omer b'yechanon, no'agu ha'om k'beis hillel alibud Rabbi Yehuda. The custom is to follow beis hillel. Which beis hillel? The one that Rabbi Yehuda mentions, not the one in our Mishnah that Rabbi Meir mentions. And therefore, according to beis hillel, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you make the bracha of besomim first, and that's why Rava did exactly that. Continues the Gemara. The next topic, the next dispute in our Mishnah between Bishama and Bishilel is the text, the formula of the bracha on the flame on the nair. Do you say boire? Do you say boro? Do you say moir? Meaning one flame, moire, a number of flames. Let's see the Gemara. Omarova. Says Rava. Some suggest that it's Rava. Everyone agrees that the word bora is in past tense and therefore it's appropriate. Bora, Hashem created the flame, light, fire. The bora mashma, that it means past tense. Kipligi, what's the argument? Beboire. When you say the word boire, what does it mean? Beshamai sovri, beshamai hold boire, de osid le mivra. Boire means that he's going to create. That would be in- inappropriate. When we make the bracha on the Nair, we are making a bracha to Hashem who created fire on Motzah Shabbos. But Hillel Savri, but Hillel say that Boire nami de Boro Mashma. The word Boire is also referring to the past tense, and therefore you can say it here as well. Mosiv Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef asked, we see in the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Yoytzer Oyer uvoire Choyshech. And there it's clearly talking about that Hashem created in the past tense. Yoitzer Horim Uboire Ruach. That Hashem created the mountains and the Ruach. So you see as well that Boire is in past tense. Boire Shomayim Venoiteem. That Hashem created the heavens. So you see that it must be that everybody agrees that Boire is in the past tense. So how do you explain Beis Shammai? Elom Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef says as follows. Beboro. Uboire, both the term boro and boire, kule almole pligi de boro mashma. But everybody agrees that it means past tense. And therefore, if you use it in the bracha of the neir, it's valid, it's a good bracha. Ki pligi, what's the argument? Bemoir, umoire. Do you say that Hashem created a single fire, light, flame, umoire, or in plural tense? To Bishamai Savra, Bishamai hold Chodun Ahira Ika Benura. Bishamai say there's only one fire in every flame. There's only one color. It's, it's only one Moir there. Bishilil Savra, Bishilil say Tuvan Ahira Ika Benura. There are many colors. There's the yellow part of the flame and there's the blue part of the flame. There's the whitish part of the flame. There are many different parts of the flame with different colors. And therefore you say a plural tense. 
Tanya Miochi, we saw Brisa to this effect. Omru lem b'shilil b'shamay. B'shil said to b'shamay, har b'moirois yesh b'ur. There are many different types of flames in a fire, and therefore you say moirei, you don't say moir. In Mirza Shem, in our next year, we're going to carry on from here.